Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about a new way of thinking about money that is different from how a lot of people think about money, and that is to think about money and the whole system of money as an information system. So it's tempting to think about money as something that you own or possess, and that way of thinking about it makes sense. And I think the denominations of money, like here's money, it's like, okay, we have this money, it's something that you can hold, and there are also coins, so it's this, this object that you think of as owning. But is that what money really is? Like these bills, they don't have any inherent value to them, it's just a piece of paper, and frankly it's a pretty impractical piece of paper. Like, okay, maybe if I want to see a picture of George Washington, if I find him aesthetically pleasing, then that's cool. But the bills and the coins themselves are not very useful. I'd say coins are often a little bit more useful than bills, because you can sometimes like use them to open things or turn things. But the point is that the value that they have lies in the fact that you can buy things with them. So they're only really useful because we all agree that they're useful, and to some degree the government mandates that they're useful. Like there's this idea of legal tender. If you look on the dollar bill, written here in really small letters, it says, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. So what that means is that the government is mandating that if someone has a debt to you, and they want to pay off that debt using that type of money, you have to accept it. That's what legal tender is. Like, you can't say, oh, I'm not going to take that, you have to pay me in something else. No, it's like the government is mandating that this is legal tender. So in order to understand more about money, I think it, it helps to go back to the origins of money, which is in barter. Like, back before money, humans just went out into the world and made things and gathered things and hunted and gathered and all sorts of things like that. Um, but at some point, people started trading. So like, here's an example. I have tomatoes. I grow tomatoes, and I have, this time of year, an almost endless supply of them. Like, I, I gave away eight tomatoes yesterday, and I still have two, and this is only the big ones. I have tons and tons of little tomatoes, too, and I have tons of basil. So I've been giving this away to my friends. But if I wanted to start a sort of primitive barter economy, I might say, hey, I have a bunch of tomatoes, does anyone else have anything that I need? So like, last night one of my friends made a delicious pizza, and I could have been like, hey, I'll give you a whole bunch of tomatoes, and then you can give me like a slice or two of the pizza. So it's like a trade. And this is all fine and dandy, except that if you want an economy to get more complex, it kind of makes sense to have a way of keeping track of these transactions, because if I am limiting myself to only having an interaction, like a trade with someone, if they have something that I want exactly when I want it, it's going to limit me a lot. So people invented this idea of like recording transactions and things like that. It's like, oh, I gave you a whole bunch of tomatoes, so I owe you, I'll get you back later. And somewhere along the line, people start recording these things. And you can sort of see money, these things, as a way of facilitating and keeping track of these transactions. So if you agree on like a particular exchange medium, you can say, okay, I don't want to write this down in a book, but like, you give me a bunch of tomatoes, and I'll give you some of this money, and then you can take that money and give it to someone else. And so basically, this is how money is an information system. It's keeping track of who has provided work for the economy as a whole. I think this is a little bit different from thinking about money as something that you own, because like any information system, there can be a question of accuracy or validity of the information. 
Now this is especially easy to see nowadays when there are all sorts of electronic transactions. Like a simple example, if you hack a system and you alter the amount of money that's in your bank account or someone else's, you like somehow illegally transfer money, you've kind of broken the system. Like the amount of money recorded, it's not what other people would expect to be there or want to be there. So the records may show that you have more money, but you didn't do anything legitimate to get it. And this is basically the same idea with theft. So like, if someone goes and threatens someone else, and they're like, give me all your money or I'll hurt you, um, and the person gives their money, well, the person hasn't really done work. They haven't contributed something of value to the economy. So they're sort of cheating the system. And these things, whether they are like violent crime or sort of embezzlement and hacking and those sorts of like white collar crime, regardless of what it is, it kind of diminishes the usefulness of this information system. Because now there are people running around with a lot of money that didn't necessarily do anything to earn it. They're not sort of providing their fair share to the economy. So, why do I think it's important to acknowledge thinking of the economy and the money system as an information system? I think the biggest reason is that if you think about it like that, you can brainstorm completely new systems. You can think of completely new ways of managing an economy. And I think this is a really worthwhile thing to do. So like, if you're working with some sort of physical medium, like coins or something like that, or if you're working with like a commodity, whether it's like precious metals like silver or anything, um, if you're working in that sort of system, there's certain limitations of it. It's like, okay, you give it from one person to another, and so on. It's, it's sort of straightforward. But there's virtually endless other ways to imagine money. One of them uh, arose in the 20s, it sort of got popular, and there are different examples of it. Like, uh, especially it became popular in the Great Depression, there was this thing called stamp script. So there's this idea that you have money, and you attach stamps to it over time, so that it would be dated. So this money might expire after a month, and if I wanted to uh, use it a month later, it would have the months labeled, I would have to buy a stamp, which would cost one cent, and I would then attach it, and so on. So basically, at the end of each month, this loses one cent of value. So you're kind of, you're creating artificial inflation. And why is this, why would someone want this? Like, as a person, I wouldn't want my money to lose value. But with respect to the economy as a whole, it's beneficial because it makes it kind of hot potato money. It's like, uh-oh, if I don't spend this now, it's going to lose value. And this is really important if you're using an exchange medium that is not legal tender. Like this, someone has to accept because it's mandated by law. But if it's some other exchange medium that someone just made up, it's a little bit harder to get it to catch on. And so th this practice of like making it lose value is one way to kind of increase the velocity of circulation of money, to make, make it hot potato money, make people more likely to spend it. And it has some useful benefits for in increasing economic activity, because if everyone's trying to spend their money, then it, it sparks trade, it sparks economic activity, and it stimulates the economy, and this is a good thing. So, this is kind of related to how some economists talk about inflation. They say a certain amount of inflation is actually beneficial for the economy, it's beneficial to business. There are fundamentally different ways, though, of envisioning an economy and an information system to keep track of people's contributions. One idea out there that I've seen proposed, and I've seen it implemented, is this idea of like a thank you currency. So instead of people owning money and then trading it to others, there's this idea that whenever someone does something for you, you can just generate a record in the system. So you, you, this would be like an electronic thing. You give them some sort of thank you, and then they would have like a profile, and it would say, hey, I have so and so many thank yous, because I've provided things to other people. 
and you can design or agree upon a set of rules of like when you're allowed to issue thank yous and maybe you have to have a certain number of them before you're allowed to issue them to other people and so on. And you can basically design these systems any way you want. It's completely open-ended. And just like you have the Federal Reserve System that is regulating the currency supply through changing interest rates and things like that, you can design any system you want for regulating any sort of new economic system you think of. I want us to start thinking about this sort of thing because I think there are a lot of problems in our world and in our society that are caused by the structure of the economic system. The way our economy is structured, it forces an economy to have a continual growth rate in order for it to be just economically healthy. And I don't like this. I think that this is actually driving both the destruction of the environment and sometimes the destruction of traditional cultures you have more and more stuff that gets moved into the cash economy that previously wasn't traded with money and now it's traded with money. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other problems with the economy. I think that the, the money system often creates this boom-bust cycle and that's really problematic, especially because these periods of economic depression can be really hard on people, but sometimes those boom periods can be kind of wasteful too. So I, I think it would be better to have a more stable economic system. These are just a few of the problems with the economic system. One more is distribution of wealth. There are a lot of people in our society who, by no decision of their own, have very few resources and very few opportunities. And there are other people who, they haven't really done much work, but just because of what family they were born into, they have a lot of wealth. And I have a problem with this. Um, I would rather see an economy where people are a little bit more equal, or perhaps a lot more equal, not necessarily totally equal, but a lot more equal in terms of their wealth and spending power than we currently see. And I especially don't like the idea of a person being really, really wealthy when they personally haven't done much to contribute to the economy. That really bothers me. Also, there's a lot of work that people do in the economy that is not compensated. So there are a lot of people who are doing things to contribute to society and they're not getting compensated with money for that. And I have a problem with that too, especially because there are these other people that have a lot of wealth that aren't really providing much. So basically, the long list of ways in which I think our economy is broken, I want us to start brainstorming. And the most liberating thing, like the starting point for this, is to think about the economic system, the money system, as an information system. It's not this thing that you hold. Yes, yes, I can hold this, this money and I own the money, but like, that's not what the money system is. That money only has value because we agree to use it and it has a set of rules that govern its use. We can think of new systems, we can devise new rules, we can do whatever we want. And I think that we can design a much better system than the system we have in our society. And I think it would address a lot of the problems. So if, if you want to hear about this, I'd love to talk about this more. I have a lot more ideas. I would love to explain more of them, but I'd love to hear from you. Is this something you're passionate about? Uh, please share. Yeah, thank you.